waking up every day, looking forward to see the mailman delivering the mails and hoping to see my hearing letter, in, waiting to hear a phone call from my lawyer about my hearing date, or checking my email constantly. Days goes without number, thinking about what my hearing will look like. When will my time come? How long have you been waiting? About 18 months. Have you gone for your hearing? <sighs> Not exactly. I'm waiting, hoping. I'm still awaiting our hearing date. Being on the waiting list, you are just there, floating. You don't know your fate. You're just there, hoping that someday it's going to be better. to Canada because of my sexual orientation, which was unfortunately made known to my, my partner, that's the male partner. My sexual relationship with a fellow woman was got known to him and I just have to find my way out. Um, it involves the punishment of 14 years imprisonment and my mom was arrested. My family members were tortured. I came in through the US. I came in with my children because my life was at risk at home. I came to Canada to seek refuge, to protect my life and the life of my children from those looking for us in Nigeria. When I was caught, because of my sexual orientation, I have to run away, leave, uh, take my kids to my mom. Africa is still very much attached to the tradition. They believe they have polluted the, um, the spiritual environment and even the physical environment of the community. I, I can as well be told that my blood is needed to cleanse the community, that I have done what no one is supposed to do. <laughs> Being a refugee claimant in Canada, it's not been easy. I just came here just with a luggage, few clothes, just my passport. That was the only thing I had on me to identify myself. So life was just from the scratch, from the very beginning. I was working as a banker and even before if I can work I have to go back to school it's a little bit not easy and to live a better life in Canada you have to go to school I went to the school to become a certified support worker in Canada so that I have done and with that I've been able to start working with a support worker agency. I used to be an entrepreneur. I have my supermarkets. I'm into different business, but I can't do that here now since I don't have a stay yet. So I have to do what is limited for us to do for now as a refugee. On the process of seeking for a job, I was unable to get a job Reason being that I was asked 
if I have a Canadian experience, that was the barrier. It was really tough on me. So what I do is I have to go and volunteer and I have to go back to school to gain a Canadian experience. Well, it wasn't easy initially. My last baby, she was always asking me so many questions. Mommy, I can't copy here. The room we are staying is too small. We have a bigger home um, at home. Um, I, I want to go back. Yeah, the first challenging was housing. Um, I was in the shelter, but after a while, the counselors in the shelter started asking me to go and get an apartment for myself. When I came to Canada, I stayed in shelter. And in that process, I was looking for accommodation. And it was very difficult because most of the time when you meet the landlords, uh, when they find that you are uh, you're a refugee, they don't want to give you accommodation. The moment they see that I'm a refugee and also I'm a black person, they don't want to give me accommodation. And I remember meeting a landlord the moment I stepped my foot on the door. He didn't allow me to go here. I was eager to leave the shelter. And I went out looking for an accommodation. But when I get to where the, the landlords are, they ask for pay stock, they ask for credit score. And as a newcomer, it wasn't easy for me to get a credit score. And it wasn't easy as well to also have a pay stop because I wasn't working. When they started school, the acceptance from other children here wasn't that easy. They are black and they are coming to meet up with the whites. And some of this white feels that black people are evil. So as my last daughter was the one that was already always giving me challenge. She would come back and say, mommy, I go to school today. I wanted to play with um, some girls. They just walked out of me. I start talking to her that don't worry, they will accept you is because you are still new. So all you need to do is to go to them, let them know how nice you are, do things that will make them love you and you see you, you cope well. If I get deported, at that time, my life will be at risk because I'll be facing persecution, um, either sometimes in jail or death. What is awaiting me is 14 years imprisonment. It's total rejection from the family, from the community, total rejection. So going back home is really not an, op it's not an option. I'm not going back home. Here I am seeking refuge, and I believe that the government of Canada, they are going to protect me. That's, I so much believe. Well, I'm just trying to be optimistic. I always have it in my mind that something positive will come up because I don't want to think about the other side if I'm not being given or not being accepted. Because when I came into Canada, it's, it's more like, like a home. I'm, very, I'm very, very, very safe in Canada. Because of my orientation, I found a home here. <laughs> 